up. If you put a bunch of us together, we don't grow as well. But if you give us a little bit more space to grow in, then we, we grow a little bit better. Same thing with plants. If we're going to be different and claim to be different, we got to stay clear of pesticides, herbicides, and synthetic fertilizers. That's what makes us different. And so we are here uh, to teach and to expand the knowledge of those that want to learn how to grow their own fresh vegetables on small tracts of land. If, if you don't know anything about gardening and you want to start gardening, my first suggestion is, is that you start small. Don't overwhelm yourself because it can get to be a lot of work. There are those that might want to grow in their own backyard. And you can start by using containers to grow in, or you can start by cultivating the land in your backyard. And it's quite simple to grow tomatoes and peppers and cucumbers and squash, just to name a few. I always tell folks, if you plant the right thing in the right season, you have less challenges to insects. But I think sometimes later on in the year when it starts cooling off, you can start planting your green leaf vegetables, your mustards, your turnips. That's when I would really plant my collard greens, my collards, uh, and those type things. But you never want to transplant on a day like today. You always want to transplant on a cloudy day, late, late in the evening, or a rainy day. Because the sun just beats it down. Three reasons why people should be concerned and involved in growing their own food. One is the environment. We have to stay in these places that we live. And if we continue to spray insecticides and fungicides and uh, weed control and all that, it gets into the soil. So if we don't do that, then we're making an effort to protect the environment. And that's our own little piece that we can do to protect the environment. Two, is that we can become more healthier if we eat the food that we grow. And so then we start ridding ourselves of some of these, the high blood pressure, the diabetes, and some of the cancers, because now we are growing and eating food that's more pure. The third thing mm -hmm. is the therapeutic value that it brings to an individual. When they get out in the garden, it's a place for relaxation, it's a place where you can be in meditation. It's a place where you can kind of calm your nerves for the day. So the therapeutic value, the environmental value, and the health value are the three things that I feel that gardening can do for an individual. How much expense do you have to incur to start a garden? A gardening can be inexpensive. We, we've been looking at raised beds today and that material cost to build those raised beds. But I tell people that you can get pallets, flats, stack them too high, put soil in them, go get you a dollar and 50 cent pack of seed and you well on your way. But that look like morning glory to me, which is a terrible weed in the garden. Once that morning glory get to going, it's gonna wrap around everything and it's gonna start choking the plants out. So you gotta you, you gotta start being able to identify your plants from your weed. And we know if uh, insecticide kill an insect, if we keep eating enough of that same insecticide that they spray on the plants and then deliver it to us in the gro grocery store, it will have an adverse effect up on us. Peppers, and, and especially with these plants are gonna grow more straight, straight, straight up. And so you'll, you, you can increase your investment by taking these peppers and just pinching the top out of them like this. And when you pinch the top out of them, it causes the pepper to blossom out of the center additional 
shoots and grow wider rather than straight up. One of our best weed controls that we use is cardboard. Yeah, we lay cardboard down the pathway and uh, put a little bit of wood chips over the top of it and that keeps, help keeps the weeds down. The good thing about the cardboard is that the cardboard will eventually break down into organic matter and we just cultivate. So I'm going to encourage all of you to take a stab at growing in your own backyard and also maybe going through the process to get a hoop house so that you can extend your growing season here in the Cleveland area. So I look forward to uh, addressing any concerns and any issues that anyone might have around growing in the backyard. I'm usually in Cleveland once a month, and so I'm gonna invite you to join us at some of our workshops. And we also like to hear from you because we know that you have something to add to the conversation.